Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Real Estate Walk and Talk. I am going to be walking you through two websites you can use to evaluate home price appreciation. Many of our clients, many new potential clients are asking about home price appreciation, what's the impact on your overall rental property portfolio, and more importantly, where can you find this data? And the reality is it's not that simple. Somebody's got to show you where to go. You can't just use Zillow or some of these sites to use it. Um, but I'm going to show you two sites that you can use to determine the home price appreciation in the market you're considering, and then also show you how to compare across other markets. And you're going to understand how to use this to determine the historical home price appreciation, which is what you should use to make your decisions. And if you have questions on topics just like this, you can join me every Tuesday and Thursday for the Not Your Average Investor show. We do it Tuesday and Thursday at 1230 Eastern, and you can register at jwbshow.com. All right, so let's get into it today here. I'm going to do a little switcheroo of the camera here. And uh, I'm showing you this FHFA HPI calculator. All right, and I'll put this link in the um, in the comments here, but it's from the Federal Housing Finance Agency. So we know the data is accurate. And this is available for everybody to use this FHFA HPI calculator. HPI stands for Housing Price Index. And what the uh, Federal Housing Finance Agency does is they have compiled the data points of the prices across all of the major metros. And they've done this since 1991. And you can use this as step one to figure out your home price appreciation. So I've just come here and I've put in the state of Florida, Jacksonville, and then the purchase quarter. So you, the data is accurate all the way from 1991. So that's the one you wanna use for your purchase quarter. Q1 of 1991, and then your valuation quarter is the next one. You use 2020 Q1, that's the last available data. And then we're just gonna use a simple $100,000 as your purchase price. And you click calculate right here, and what it does is it calculates the estimated value for your MSA, which is right here, this is Jacksonville here. It also does it for the state, but we're paying attention to the MSA. And what this says is based on the average appreciation rate from 1991 all the way to Q1 of 2020, if you bought a property for $100,000, it's now worth $340,000 based on historically accurate appreciation here in Jacksonville. So that should make your eyes and ears perk up a little bit. Uh, that is a lot of appreciation. And that's why people are including home price appreciation in the decision for where they choose to invest in rental properties, assuming they are holding on for a full market cycle, right? So now we know that that is the value, but you don't know how much annualized home price appreciation rate that really is. So you gotta go to this next website, all right? This next website is really just an, an online calculator here. I'll put this in the link. It's a free online home price appreciation calculator. But what you do is you come here and you use that information that you just got from the Federal Housing Finance Agency. So we put the home value appreciation rate is what we wanna calculate in dollars the purchase price of 100,000, and your purchase date of January 1st, 1991. Your sales price is 340, because that's what the Federal Housing Finance Agency data showed us. It would be worth in Q1, and then the sales date is uh, January 1st, 2020. You click Calculate, and what you get there is a 4.31% annualized home price appreciation rate over 29 years. So that is the historical home price appreciation rate in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, a question you should be asking if you're thinking about investing in other markets is, what is your market's home price appreciation rate over the long haul? And you can now compare that. So we'll go back to the Federal Housing Finance Agency site. And now we're going to compare it to a market like Cleveland, Ohio. All right. So we get questions from clients or potential clients that are thinking about investing and they're saying, hey, why should I choose Jacksonville over a market like Cleveland? Cleveland has a better rent to price ratio than Jacksonville. And so one of the things you need to look at is beyond just the rent to price ratio, because your job as an investor is to get the best risk adjusted rate of return. And there are other profit centers other than just positive cash flow. And I'm going to show you the difference between Jacksonville and Cleveland right here. All right. So we're going back and we're looking at the same data, right? Cleveland, Ohio, Q1 of 1991 is the purchase date, Q, uh, Q1 of 2020 for the valuation quarter and a purchase price of $100,000. Now, when you calculate this, 
the value of that property, the same property you purchased for $100,000 is only worth one ninety six dollars in Cleveland, Ohio. If I then come to this home price calculator, right, the same one that I was using before, this good calculator, free home price appreciation calculator online, right? And I look and I put the information in here, $100,000 purchase in Cleveland, January 1st, 1991 is the purchase date. Sales price is 196, which we just got from the Federal Housing Finance Agency, and the sale date of January 1st, and I click calculate. Your home price appreciation rate is only 2.35% per year. All right, if you remember Jacksonville's home price appreciation rate is 4.3%. So you've got this asset that is compounding over time. The value is compounding over time. It's a $100,000 asset. And the effects of an additional, basically almost doubling of the appreciation, over, appreciation rate over time, over 29 years, is a lot. And here's the thing that people need to understand, is that home price appreciation rates, when you take them out over a full market cycle, repeat themselves. Home price appreciation is not speculative when you're evaluating over a full market cycle. And a full market cycle is known to be between 10 and 20 years. If you look at the data, home price appreciation rates repeat themselves. This was even seen during the 20 years that surrounded the Great Recession, right? So this is a real thing. You can count on home price appreciation, and you should definitely take this information into account when you're deciding between which market you're gonna put your rental property portfolio in. All right, now here's the kicker. I want you to take a look at something here as I bring this up. I want you to see what the difference is here in real dollars, okay? I want you to see what the difference is in real dollars if you purchased a property in Cleveland for $100,000 in 1991. Your property would be worth 196, just like we talked about. You purchased that same property in Jacksonville in 1991. Your property's worth 340, like we talked about. That's $144,000 of additional return just by investing in a market that has growth, that has a history of home price appreciation. And if you consider this over a portfolio of five properties or 10 properties or 20 rental properties, choosing the right market is a million dollar decision. This will have a dramatic impact on your overall returns and your ability to achieve your financial goals. So my advice to you is to look beyond just the cash flow. Take off your cash flow blinders. Look at all of the profit centers. Right? You've got home price appreciation as a profit center, but you have other profit centers as well. You've got tax savings from the depreciation, the taxable depreciation, which is a write-off. That's a profit center. You've got um, principal pay down, which is your resident paying off the loan for you. Right? That's another profit center. You've got another profit center, which is the effect of inflation, which helps you and it devalues the debt that you have. So it gets easier and easier to pay off your loan just simply by riding the wave of inflation. You've got all these profit centers. And your job as an investor is to make the best risk-adjusted return decision. And if you're not looking at all those profit centers, you can't do that. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Hope you guys will join me on the Not Your Average Investor Show tomorrow at 1230. We do it every Tuesday and Thursday at 1230 Eastern. You can register at JWB Show and have a great rest of the day.